So it looks like the feds were not kidding when they announced that they were going to be going after Diddy from every angle because they have moved on from his freak offs and they are now exposing him for allegedly taking out his ops. The streets have been saying for a long time that Diddy allegedly unlives his ops and it seems like we finally have some proof. Cassie said it in her lawsuit, Little Rod said it in his and now the feds are claiming that Diddy allegedly tried to take out Cat Williams after Cat exposed him earlier this year on Club Shay Shay. The feds also came with some shocking receipts that exposed just how lucky Cat is to be alive and it's wild. You already know that Cat is never shy about spilling the tea and that's what landed him in this mess in the first place. Everything he said was next level wild and of course he came through with some receipts to back it all up, especially with his claims about how Diddy desperately wanted to get him in his bed. But the real question is, is Diddy just head over heels for a cat like he had claimed or is he so down bad that he's doing whatever it takes to get to cat? Well right after the new year, Shannon Sharp and Gat Williams decided to stir the pot with an interview that had the internet ablaze, completely in a chokehold. And Cat doesn't even talk much, but when he does, y'all, he really talks. This time he spills some crazy serious tea that had everybody gagged. He had a lot to say about Hollywood's big names like Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, and more. But the part that got everybody talking was the wild story he shared about Diddy. Like I said earlier, Cat mentioned that Diddy tried to seduce him and get him in his bed. You got to tell him no. Now I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole i was telling you about <laughs> right uh because p diddy be wanting to body and you gotta tell him no Come you on. got to tell him no I, I did i did see i got the receipts for everything i'm telling you that's why i can yeah, say yeah, i'm I so mean, can, freely can, 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 i need can, i need no one you here get your number thank you can. sir thank you but according to the streets when cat turned diddy down the man allegedly went so far as to threaten to assault him now unless you've been living under a rock or out in space somewhere you probably already heard about the whispers about diddy and his let's say extracurricular activities but even before cat spilled the tea there have been rumors swirling for ages about diddy trying to get a little too close to some young men in the industry and that's just the tip of the iceberg but for a hot minute now people have been talking about how diddy can't seem to keep it together and has been out here slinging it all over town but here's the real twist it's not just with women because the streets are claiming that diddy has been getting flirty with the fellas too and apparently his harem isn't just full of chicks but some boys too but honestly, this isn't even new information because people have been whispering about Diddy for a while that he has a thing for the men. Because even back in the 90s, Wendy Williams was one of the few brave voices who tried to expose Diddy's alleged secret gay activities on her Hot 97 talk show. Diddy had serious power back then. And when he found out that Wendy was on to him, he didn't just sit back because he ordered the ladies from his girl group Toto to try to jump Wendy and teach her a lesson. I remember I got off the air one day and them, <laughs> them total bitches were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. I wasn't yet married. My knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. Scal hiding like a girl. <laughs> Thanks, Scal. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through now. I'm not like what? Like what? Let's fight because I'm not one of those type of broads. Well, anyways, Diddy definitely miscalculated on that one because almost getting jumped was not enough to make Wendy back down. She kept dropping talks about him being on the down low and Diddy wasn't having it. He got so mad that he ended up getting her fired from her job and basically tried to ruin her career. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams and uh, she she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. Well, Wendy's now ex-husband Kevin Hunter also spoke about this in an interview, revealing just how close Diddy came to ruining Wendy's life and her career. Is it true that Diddy got her fired from the radio station? Did he have anything to do with that? I think that he had, yes, I think yes. Well, let's be clear, nobody got fired. Okay. He got suspended. Okay. Yeah. Did, did he use his influence and power with Steve Smith and him at the time? And, and, and God knows whatever his relationship was with the overall station because Bad Boy was a powerhouse. We all know how Bad Boy dominated a large part of the 90s. And as far as New York, you know, they, they was a powerhouse. So 
okay, was he, you know, King Joffrey Joe? Yeah. Did he go in there and shake him up and say, yo, you know, I want this chick off. She dissing my group and all kinds of shit. Yeah. Wendy was one of the few people who had the guts to call Diddy out on his BS. And that's exactly why people miss her so much. You just know she would have had a field day with this Diddy situation, especially when Cassie's lawsuit dropped. She'd be on that story like white on rice, giving us all the messy details with zero filter. But hopefully we're filling some of that gap. So hit subscribe if you like it. But also, isn't it wild that Diddy's first action was violence, ordering his artist to jump Wendy? What happened to the good old dialogue and trying to talk it out like a mature adult? There was no reason for Diddy to immediately jump into violence, but then again, given what we know now about him, should we even be surprised? But what really had fans feeling even worse about Diddy's violence side was Cassie filing her lawsuit against him. She accused him of not just hurting her, but also manipulating her through out more than their 10-year relationship, but it didn't stop there. She claimed that he forced her to be intimate with male escorts that he'd bring to his freak-off parties. The lawsuit was so heavy that it literally came with a trigger warning right on the first page. Diddy thought settling out of court would put an end to it all, but that just opened the floodgates for even more legal trouble that he hadn't faced in years. Multiple women stepped forward with stories about how Diddy had allegedly essayed them, including one woman who claimed she was very young when it happened. This had everybody questioning what really went down in these freak off parties and whether there was an actual consent involved. As Cassie said, she often felt like she had no choice in those situations. Now, don't get me wrong, being gay really isn't the issue here. Be gay, Diddy, we don't care. It's more about the behavior that Diddy allegedly showed. He can do whatever he wants in his bedroom. It's just the shady stuff that's got people talking and all the secretiveness. The whole situation is just crazy because Diddy ended up hurting a lot of people along the way. Take Cassie's lawsuit, for example, where she claimed he forced her to be intimate with male escorts while he just sat back and got off on it. And according to Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, those freak offs were for Diddy's pleasure in more ways than one. Gene pointed out that at these gatherings, it just wasn't about fun. They were designed to cater to Diddy's desires. Plus, if we look back at Cassie's lawsuit, she mentioned that Diddy had specific requests for what he wanted when he was hiring these male escorts for these freak offs. It's wild to to think about the level of control he allegedly had over the people and the situation. She said that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. So, you know, what you think about that? Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? <laughs> Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online? just for them to have sex with her. So is it just me or does it seem like Gene doesn't like Diddy very much? I mean, it's sort of hard to blame him for not liking Diddy because can you imagine what it meant to be working for Diddy and seeing all the nasty and crazy stuff he may have been doing? This kind of explains why he jumps at every opportunity that he can to expose as much as he can on Diddy. Okay, so back to Cat and the interview on Club Shay Shay. Cat built his whole reputation for calling out every shady part of the industry and he's not one to shy away from exposing the dirt that most fans are told totally oblivious to. But when it comes to sketchy dealings with all the Illuminati nonsense, you definitely can't pay Cat enough to keep his mouth shut. He's never really been a fan of Diddy and has a history of calling him out for his questionable relationships with younger men. And Cat has even dropped the P word to describe Diddy, if you know and catch my drift. So people might think that Kat's recent comments are all about Cassie, but no, he's been coming for Diddy since way back in 2011. He exposed both Jermaine Dupri and Diddy for allegedly essaying the Criss Cross boys. Chris Kelly and Chris Smith were just kids when Jermaine Dupri noticed them in the 90s, and they were so young that they were still in elementary school at the time. But by the time they hit 12 and 13, they were making waves in the industry. And behind the scenes, things were dark. Allegedly, Jermaine was SAing them and even passing them out to his friends in the industry, including Diddy. And it's just a wild and tragic situation. These young boys allegedly went through horrific acts for years, causing Chris Kelly to develop a drug problem due to the years of abuse. And the crazy part is that both boys had suspicions about Jermaine, but have been promised fame and fortune, and being the young boys they were, they succumbed to the pressure. 
And in an interview, Chris Kelly had this to say. We were just playing video games at this mall in Atlanta when all of a sudden this dude comes to us and said he'd like for us to work with him as rap musicians. We had no idea who he was. In fact, I told my daddy that the guy was probably a child molester. Yeah, he basically looked at us all funny. And according to Gene Dill, the passing out of young stars wasn't just limited to Jermaine Dupri. Did he also had his plans to pimp out the members of his girl band, Danny Begain, allegedly. Cause I heard him and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio and I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'm a drug that off and picked them out and, and, and picked them out to my, <laughs> picked them out to my neck. He said, I'm a drug them out. I'm going to get them all on drugs and I'm going to pimp their ass out to my neck. I was like, there's somebody kids and walked out. And Cat had known this since 2011, so when he called out Diddy and Jermaine Dupree, he used the P word. What's happening, Pope? I'll be back to you with JD ain't had enough. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. 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 Jermaine Dupree, small as a child. That was fucking Jack. But what's really crazy about this is that Diddy, knowing Cat's feelings about him, still tried to proposition him like he was some kind of lover boy. Like, what? It just doesn't add up. But according to Cat, Diddy went all out trying to get to him, even offering him $50 million for a one night stand. Like, seriously? Diddy is definitely not getting out of these allegations unscathed. Cat didn't dive into all the details, but an insider revealed that Diddy wasn't happy about being turned down. He allegedly even sent people after Cat to kidnap him and take him to some unknown spot. Allegedly, Cat barely managed to escape, and that's a big part of why he's kept his distance from Diddy. Sources say Cat believes Diddy was trying to force him into a freak off against his will, and he's just lucky to have gotten out. Now, you'd think that that kind of experience would make Cat stay low and keep quiet, right? Well, if you thought that, you clearly do not know the man Cat. That man is impossible to intimidate. The Illuminati has been coming for him for years, allegedly, and he still calls them out. So Diddy's attempts to pressure him into a freak off only made him more determined to speak out. Instead, it made him really mad. He decided he wanted to go in on Diddy and expose some wild tea that we didn't even know about. Like the fact that the bromance between Diddy and Jay-Z goes way deeper than just a bromance, because there's a little bit of a Hanky panky thing going on, allegedly. But before we get into Cat's revelations, let's talk about how 50 Cent has been trolling Diddy since Cassie's lawsuit dropped. Cause y'all, it's like 50 has been waiting for the perfect moment and opportunity to troll Diddy even more than he has been already. After Diddy's fourth lawsuit, 50 said, no, he will be fine. He has so much money. When his corporate partners pull out, he will just reach into his pockets and make it happen. You saw how fast he paid Cassie. He's a real billionaire. He has F you money, guys. So F you. Did he do it? Coming soon. In another IG post, 50 Cent posted a video of Eddie Griffin cracking jokes about Diddy. In that video, Eddie Griffin was seen taking a swipe at Diddy's long-standing beef with Suge Knight, who's currently doing time behind bars. On his Twitter page, 50 Cent said, I thought Diddy was a billionaire music mogul. If he's smart, he'll file bankruptcy now. Anyone with real money knows why I'm saying this. I'm the best producer for the job, guys. Here comes the receipts. Yeah, so 50 is definitely an enforcer on the Hey Diddy train, just like Cat. Because Cat exposed Jay-Z for allegedly being Diddy's lover and partner in crime. For some context, Jaguar Wright had an interview in which she straight up claimed that Diddy and Jay-Z were more than just friends. She hinted at some intimate moments between them, if you catch my drift. Camaraderie with honeycombs and um, AKA did look, I mean, Diddy. And um, why do you give him the honeycombs? Why, why do you give him honeycombs? Because he smacks him. That's what the side of me. Anyway, um, 
And if y'all can trust 50 Cent to join that party too as an enforcer. And he shared a video of him on stage with Diddy and Jay-Z, capturing the moment when Diddy playfully smacked Jay-Z's butt on stage in front of thousands of people. What you gonna do? What you gonna do for him, Jay? I wanna take him back a little bit. What's it, my nigga? You Put know your Rockefeller shine on the back city, nigga. But according to Cat Williams, there's way more going on than what meets the eye. He claimed that Jay-Z and Diddy have been involved in some shady business together, not just freak off, but also allegedly grooming younger women. You know the saying, birds of a feather flock together, right? Well, Cat believes that definitely applies here because he's claiming that Diddy and Jay-Z are knee deep in some messy business together. And I know that everybody is saying the same thing right about now, but as Cat was one of the first people to speak on it, Another person who also spoke on it is Jaguar Wright, who stepped up to reveal that Diddy wasn't alone in his mess because he and Jay-Z were allegedly in cahoots. She also claimed that Jay-Z has managed to get away with the same type of behavior because he's been way more careful. Well, let's be real, a lot smarter than Diddy. Sean Carter is worse. Uh -oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Mm -hmm. This pussy been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 fucking years. Well, Cap backed up Jaguar on that, claiming that Diddy and Jay-Z allegedly groomed women together. He pointed out that even though that Diddy has been the one getting dragged over this for years, Jay-Z is definitely not innocent either. Cat also pointed out how Jay-Z has allegedly involved himself with Foxy Brown way before he met Beyonce, and they first met when she was just 14 or 15 years old. Now, while Jay was just 27, these rumors have been floating around for a minute, but Foxy has always insisted that nothing happened between her and Jay, claiming they were just friends. But let's be real. What 27-year-old man wants to be friends with a 15-year-old girl? Y'all got nothing in common. But let's not even get into how Jay-Z wrote an explicit amount of lyrics for Foxy Brown back in the 90s, which just makes the whole thing kind of gross. And there is this blind item on Reddit that said, I don't want no smoke with the beehive, but let's examine her husband. He was dealing with the 14 or 15 year old Foxy Brown, involved romantically with her writing set explicit vulgar lyrics, used her as a drug mule on his trips to Maryland, he has always been known to degrade women during these times, so let's not act like he is beyond this type of behavior when it is documented. Now, Cat also pointed out how Jay-Z literally turned a blind eye when his bestie at the time, R. Kelly, groomed Leah and married her when she was a minor. Now, you probably already know about the whole R. Kelly saga with the Leah the marriage when she was just 15, using a fake ID to say that she was 18. Shockingly, even after all that came out, Jay-Z kept on collaborating with R. Kelly. They even dropped a joint album titled The Best of Both Worlds, oh, which was right in smack in the middle of R. Kelly's allegations. But don't even get me started on Kat's allegations about Diddy and Jay-Z and how Diddy allegedly helped Jay-Z drug Beyonce. In case y'all missed that tea, there were rumors a while back about how Jay-Z was allegedly manipulating Beyonce using drugs. Jaguar claimed that Jay-Z is a monster who is so obsessed with keeping Beyonce in his control that he keeps her drugged up. He's a monster. And I know he's a monster for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a monster. I a long time to see if he would grow a conscience. And the more drugs he pumps down his wife's throat to keep her in a uh, 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 No, girl. <laughs> she then asked the Beehive to start a free Beyonce campaign because she is a prisoner, allegedly, in her marriage and that she is trapped. Tell you this right now, y'all talking about free Britney. Y'all need to be doing a, a campaign that say free Beyonce. Uh, she is a prisoner in a gilded cage. Oh, oh no. If Beyonce is in prison, she's been one of the most expensive prisons ever. Yes, she is. And she's watched 24 hours a day. She's not allowed to make a choice for herself, not at all, not in any way. People think she has an amazing life. She is told what to say, she is told what to eat, she is told what to drink, she is told what to wear. By who? She is not, she is not her husband's wife, she is his employee. It's a business arrangement. 
She was a diary. Well, Gab was the first to link that to Diddy, claiming that Diddy helped Jay-Z do it. And with the recent allegations of Diddy being exposed for allegedly drugging people, it's not all that shocking that he might have something to do with it. Y'all, with all these allegations that Kat has made against Diddy, I guess we shouldn't be so surprised that Diddy allegedly put a hit out on him. I mean, he was already in the hot seat because of Cassie's lawsuit, and Kat's revelations just made things 10 times worse for him. But as you can expect, fans have had a lot to say about this situation. They believe in common saying, Cat been exposed to Hollywood, but people called him crazy. He told us about those parties in Hollywood. A lot of your favorite actors and musicians are involved in some sinister stuff, especially involving children. A lot of people are not ready for the truth. Cat has been telling the truth for over two decades now, and everybody just called him crazy and have tried to have him blacklisted and destroyed his reputation and character throughout the years so they could make him shut up and go away. But Cat took a licking and kept on coming back. Another person said, always knew I was right about Jay-Z. We always knew about Diddy, but I always felt like Jay-Z had a lot of secrecy with him. And I'm not talking about what drug dealing either. I'm talking about exactly what is being shown. Ooh, y'all, it's been one heck of a week. But drop your thoughts and comments below, subscribe, and then check out this next video.